All right. Yeah. Yesterday, after the live stream, I went to went to the shops there, and one of them that I went to was the uh, thrift store. Lucky for me, they did have a few um, Great War books, and I just wanted to quickly show them to you. Um, this one is uh, well. When this bloody war is over, you can see it there. I'm just gonna say this. I don't know about you guys, but their faces look awfully like I'm just like I wouldn't want to run into these. These guys, these guys look like a nasty lot. But um, and I don't, the, the problem is I hope I don't understand and unless maybe it's uh, like I don't I mean how you unless I I don't unless I know how the tune goes I'm not going to be able to you know what I mean you wouldn't. I don't know how, but it'll be interesting as if I'm going to sing them, but you get the idea. Uh, this one looks like it's never been even opened practically, uh, but yet again, another captiva uh, captivating image as far as I'm concerned. And look, look at all those, just the different, um, just trying to figure out what's go going on in their heads. And there's, you know, because there's all different reactions there. Um, and then a couple of Tim Cook books were there. Um, Vimy, he's one of the official historians of at the Canadian War Museum. He's written a ton of books, and this one actually, uh, this volume was huge, but it's pretty big text. Um, volume one of uh, Canadians fight. It's only up to 1916, for goodness sakes. But I was just flipping through, and then I went, "Hey, wait a minute! This is just a couple of days from now, um, and I don't know anything about it." The Battle of uh, Thipval Ridge, September 26, 1916. I was like, "Okay, oh, well, why not uh, go into that and, and just look it up?" So, and then this, this is the sweetheart. I kind of felt bad, but I mean, obviously not bad enough to break up the set. It's part of some Time Life uh, set that they had about air, uh, uh, aircraft. Maybe the only other one I would have been perhaps interested in is uh, they had one on uh, air mail and whatnot. I am going to be using, like I'll be scanning a ton of images for uh, the World War I um, daily image of the day because it's just chock full of look at this like that's just gorgeous as far as I'm concerned I'm trying sorry I'm not, I can't really see but it's like really good stuff here uh, maybe I'll try to hold on yeah so um, this it's oh this is gonna be a lot of fun to go through and there's some really interesting uh, photos uh, like look at that one that the um, uh, the what is it? Uh, saber bearing French cavalrymen on, are overtaken by a solitary biplane on its way to the front in World War One. Um, just some really, really uh, this one I love this image. I, I was thinking when I was looking at this guy laughing, I was thinking this probably would have been me, some smart ass making some smart ass remark. But uh, geez, and that pilot, you know, it's like I wonder how serious he's taking it. But uh, um, from what did that uh, Dan Lombardi uh, World War One Association um, World War One Illustrated magazine there the ones I've been reading that were donated to uh, from me to me by uh, Clark Commando in 1983 um, one of the articles mentions actually the the planes were rather robust and uh, technically could take more much more damage. Uh, uh, than a lot of uh, high tech planes nowadays, kind of thing. Like don't like don't get into all that. Whatever you can see what I mean. There's going to be some fascinating things to take a look at later. I'm not going to go through this whole thing. This guy, my God, look at him. Cheapers jumping. He had just turned 21. And they said, captivated by the alluring call to fly and fight England's Richard Raymond Barker just turned 21, was one of thousands of young men to volunteer for air service in the first year of World War I. In 1918, he was the last man killed by the war's leading ace, Germany's Manfred von Richthofen. Wow. Anyways, that's it. I'm not going to go through the whole thing here, but... Uh, uh, oh, what's this? I didn't see this. This is... Uh, okay. Nice! I'm glad I... Well, I would have saw it eventually, but I'm like, what in the world? I didn't know about this. Memo to the reader. Oh, wow. This is nice. Jeepers jumping. And what's this? Looks like a map or something. Well, Epic of Flight. Can't really see it, sorry, but because uh, it's enormous. I'll try to do uh, whatever here. Kind of like a butchered. Whatever, but oh here. 
more flattened out or something. There. Nice. Wow, I'm assuming the other books do that too in the set. Look at that. Oh, nice, nice, nice. All right, that's it. I'm glad I uh, did that and got to see the insert because I probably wouldn't have seen it for quite uh, a few days or anyways. Well, well, would have been flipping through, like I said, to make some more uh, uh, scans and whatnot. Okay, hope you're having fun. See you later.